Hey everyone, sometimes one of the things I get asked is, why are you and Guy such good friends? And Guy, I, I know I'm blindsiding you with this banter intro, but you and I had dinner the other evening with a third party. Do you want to share the awkward dinner that you that, that I tried to uninvite myself from, that you insisted I come along with, and has then turned into you know a, a typical Guy Conrad interaction? I don't think it was awkward at all. You know? I know. This is why it's wonderful. People don't get this. It's great. Go ahead. Share the story. We um, were having dinner in Seattle. And we'll, we'll leave the third party anonymous. I think that's We can leave fair. the third party anonymous. But we should say yeah. this is a... Good friend of mine. Good friend of Guy's and soon to be ex-GNGF client. Okay, Fair. And maybe we'll see, maybe, but, but that, but that's kind of the story is that, you know, we're like, Hey, you make a decision here. You know, we, we're, we're coming to the table with, we think that you might be in a bad spot. And then we, uh, the awkward part is how we tripped over each other, complimenting each other and telling this person, like I was telling them they should hire you and you were telling them they should hire me. And ultimately they should hire whoever is the best fit for them. But um, right. yeah, I mean, that's we, we're aligned on that. We're aligned on that value. So it was very, very cool. Do the right thing. Down. I don't know how many times you've ever been on a dinner, a dinner pitch with your competitor. And we both tried to kind of back off on it. It's just the way Guy and I work. And I think that's um, why special. our businesses I, are so small. It's... <laughs> 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 well, speaking of, I've never gone to dinner with Fine Law and a prospect. We're going to talk a little bit more about that today when we get to the news. All right. What else we got tied today? All right. We're going to be talking after the news about the Fine Law sale to internet brands and ultimately, really, how you should be thinking about directories. PE makes the world go round. And welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing, teaching you how to promote, market, and make fat stacks for your legal practice here on Legal Talk Network. All right, Guy, there's a lot of shenanigans going on in the digital and legal world. Uh, there's a lot that we have to cover in news. We're going to do a long news segment before we get to our directory conversation. All right. There's a big spat that really impacts all of my clients, and I suspect all of your clients, a spat between WP Engine and WordPress. WP Engine is a managed WordPress host, and WordPress is the de facto default preferred and really only answer for a website platform unless you've chosen to go on with Scorpion and handcuff yourself to a proprietary platform. But that's from a different episode. Guy, what's going on between WP Engine and WordPress? This is actually a much bigger mess than even with if you're a WP Engine client. Um, the, you know, Matt Mullenweg, if I, I apologize, I'm not pronouncing his last name correctly, you're but correct. he's the godfather of WordPress. But WordPress is it's open source. It's an open source platform for web publishing. It's got a global community of developers that build you know, the core files, they build plugins. You know, it ba I mean, I, I think I read somewhere that it's like 40% of the webs on WordPress. I, might, I don't know if that's right. I don't have a source for that. But I think the New York Times is on WordPress. A lot of companies on WordPress. And uh, my view of it, and I'm going to, uh, I'm on Team WP Engine on this because I, th I think it kind of yep, breaks agree. the entire, I think it breaks the entire ecosystem what uh, Mullenweg's doing. But my view is, is that he's like, you know, WP Engine's making all this money and they're not contributing enough back to the WordPress community. There's really no contractual obligation that anybody contributes back, um, but he's picking on WP Engine. And here's the thing, regardless of how this plays out in the long run, 
he's created all of this instability and uncertainty on WordPress. Like I know people, site owners that are jumping off of WordPress just because it's like, we can't be a part of this mess. And, you know, uh, not to quote Kanye here, but no one man should have all that power. I mean, he's really like destabilized the entire WordPress ecosystem, in my opinion. By going what are you, tell, what are you what telling are, clients right now? So we're, we're telling clients this, we, which is what we usually do when something comes up. Don't panic right now. Right? That's don't what we do are. Anything. We're waiting, wait and see mode. Don't, Still wait and don't. see. But like we're, 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 we're learning how to manage because all of our clients, so all of our clients are on WordPress. All of our hosting and managed hosting is on WP Engine, right? That is just Same. across the board. Um, we may have a couple outliers, but yeah, so we do is, is this a problem? Is this going to be a big term problem? And the answer is it actually might be. Yes, because um, I think for, and for people who are, if you're a, if you're into this, if you're on WP Engine, say forget about whether you're Conrad and Geek Line, but if you're on WP Engine, WordPress cut off access from WP Engine to their repositories to do things like security patches and stuff. They've restored that since. Um, but but this is you know this is a kind of like mutually assured destruction type of gamesmanship that they're playing here to negotiate. And if they turn it off again, you know, WP Engine's made some reassurances that they have workarounds, but I don't, you know, no one wins here. I think Nobody they're going to sort it out. Well, it's, it, it is mutually assured destruction and there's no, there's no upside for either of them. Um, it's just, it's just a, a self-inflicted wound. It does open the door, I think, for a different platform. Um, mm -hmm. I know I, mean, I heard pressables giving massive discounts to migrate from WP Engine, but but again, the point is it doesn't matter. Pressable will be the next target. It's just when you get a big enough target, he's coming after you. So anyway, for our listeners, being actionable and helpful, Guy and Conrad say, don't do anything, don't panic, we will take care of it. And when it when and if if and when it becomes a major problem, this is a we'll great switch you to, to Squarespace. Our, we will switch I thought you were gonna say we'll switch you to Scorpion. Because they won't uh, have this problem because it's a, their own closed system. I mean, if I'm Scorpion, this actually looks pretty good right now. Just throwing it, does. it out there. Yeah. Um, okay, moving on from that stuff. Ads showing up in the AIOs. You called this last episode or the episode before? Um, I've been talking about this longer than people have wanted to talk about it. I, You know, you can go listen to those prior episodes. Maybe we can drop some links. I... I Google has to keep up in this AI arms race and they're a one trick pony and ads is their trick and they're putting ads in the AIOs. And I think that if, you know, if they get it figured out where they're still making, you know, hitting their revenue targets with the ads in the AIOs, you're going to see an uptick in AIOs showing up. And I think we're already starting to see that. And, um, you know, some of the recent like click through rate studies that I've seen is that, and this is the problem is that, the AIOs decrease ad clicks by like 20% or something. Google doesn't want that. And so they'll figure that out. They'll figure it out. They're going to put, you know, you're just going to see ads in the AIOs. Like it's just going to be sponsored. Listen, it's, that's just, that's a UX. That's a UX issue. All right. So, so. Geek, Geek called this a while ago. The, the other thing to note is those ads are showing up from your Google ads account and there's nothing extra special you have to do with that. There's also no way to know what's triggering those ads. So classic Google continuing this theme of, we don't know what the fuck is going on because we're not showing you anything. And there's our Sorry. F bomb for the day. There's our, Oh, it's not, I'm going to, I'm going to draw you. So by the <laughs> way, dear listener, if you're sitting there in traffic, wondering not whether or not you should move over to pod save America or, or continue to listen to Guy and Conrad, Guy is heated. He is two cups of coffee in and he is heated. So this is two Americanos. Going, two Americanos. I don't even know what that Not means. Not just coffee. That's espresso. Okay. That's two espresso. I, th I thought that was a coffee espressos. that voted for Trump. Uh, oh. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> ah, political humor too. Okay, moving on. Um, the big news of the day is the internet brand's acquisition of Fine Law. Uh, this just hit. And we're going to spend a little bit of time after the news segment talking more in much more detail about directories in general, but under the guise of this Internet Brands Fine Law acquisition. And well, this is this is messed up. This is messed up because Conrad, 
Conrad talked about this before it happened. So he knows something or somebody, I don't know. But he he was talking about this. Adam, play the clip. Well, and I believe, and this this just holds true for, at the risk of throwing crap at everyone in the market right now, this is true for internet brands and it's and all of the brands underneath internet brands. It's also true for Scorpion. I believe they are they are optimizing for the system. They are not optimizing for Bill and Jane, the attorney. So if you haven't been, if you didn't listen to the last episode, that's a clip from our prior episode before all this news came out. And I'm not going to put Conrad on the spot, but it sure seems like Conrad had some kind of inside knowledge about this. I know Conrad, you you have any uh, statements you want to make about this? I think we should keep moving on and <laughs> get. This to is like the deep next. throat stuff. This is like Nixon Watergate stuff. So we did launch the pod right before. <laughs> The acquisition was announced. If you want to draw those dots, something's together, going on there. Something's good. Go Conrad's ahead. going to get it. Conrad's going to get speculate. some kind of email. He's going to get. You someone's going to show up at Conrad's like. place. Of anyway, work. all right. Moving on. Okay. Okay. You know the the uh, the interesting thing there as as I was re-listening to that clip, I the, I think the quote was all of the brands internet internet brands underneath internet brands like Avo. He, like Avo, we can get into. We can Didn't get you into used Avo. to work at Avo? <laughs> We're going to come back to this in our directory conversation. Okay. There's a whole bunch of stuff okay. uh, about Avo, but you pointed this out to me earlier. I looked at the internet brands listings under legal. There's Nolo, Avo, Martindale, Lawyers.com, and Captora. It seems like there's some missing brands. Did they divest of Total Attorneys and or Engage Key? Well, know I know I, I double checked that they for sure still are listed as the uh, in the footer on Engage. And so they must have read your blog post and got a little cold feet about publicizing their ownership of Engage. And the reason for that, good job, for those Conrad. of you who are new listeners, I don't know if this has anything to do with me, but the Engage chat platform tries to determine whether or not you are a good client for that law firm. And if they don't, they try and resell that leads through these family of internet brands, literally internet brands in the legal space. Um, I don't think that's very seemly. So that, that's, a, that's a whole different brand, uh, a whole different pod that we did. We'll find a link to that one as well. But and now all the fine law customers will have access to those engaged leads. That's exactly right. So Guy, you know, why do you think, uh, what, 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 why do you why do you why do you think they made this this purchase? Uh, well, I I they I have no idea why they made the purchase. No, they they this is what they this is their model, right? As Mark what would Mark Whitehead say? Oh, you're gonna you're gonna, okay. All right, all right. So we'll I, wait for after after the break. After no, the break. Well, after the break. After the break, you can hear what if if we're if we're holding on Mark Whitehead Mark Whitehead's words to keep people through the advertising break. I think we need to up our game, but it will be coming. Um also, I was psyched. I haven't written for Search Engine Land in over a decade, and if you want to learn, Guy and I've talked a lot about the increasing cost for pay-per-click due to the brand conflation issue. There's a great Search Engine Land article on brand conflation and why it is driving your overall pay-per-click budget. Yeah, you actually it was awesome. I had a world's colliding because our other agency that's outside of legal, your article popped up in the Slack feed and I was like, oh, Conrad, nice job. That, that is super gratifying. People still reading Search Engine Land, even oh, though yeah. Danny Sullivan left it years and years and years ago. Hey, are you watching us on YouTube? Hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, let's keep chatting about all this awesome internet marketing stuff for lawyers. Uh, and here's another episode that you might be interested in. You know, Conrad and I are going to be talking about this fine law acquisition, but we've been talking acquisitions. In fact, in our last episode, we were talking about the Scorpion acquisition of GNGF. Go check it out. Now let's take a break. All right, Key. Now, this is not the first time we've done a deep dive into the question around the value of legal directories. We covered this back in 2022, and I'm wondering 
if things have fundamentally changed or if we're going to be giving the same advice, what do you think? Well, you know, look, as we talked in the pre-show, I didn't want to spend waste everybody's time talking about another legal acquisition. Um, I think there are some obvious market forces that lawyers should be wise to, right? Like consolidation of these platforms means less choice. It means, uh, you know, more leverage for the ad platforms in terms of, a, you know, we we're talking about data last time. This might be the only company that has more data, perhaps in legal than Scorpion does. I think they have um, a lot more data. I think they have a lot more variety yeah. of data than Scorpion. Oh, yeah. Given, given some of the brands that they they own and work with Captura, for example, I'll use Engage as another example. Um, total I think attorneys, they have a lot. Nolo, total attorneys, Nolo, Martindale. Um, there's a, they, there's a lot more data available to them. Internet brands as a whole has kind of made a business of doing a, a better ish job with SEO with these large brands, um, and then milking them as a cash cow, right? Um, that's, that's really the model and it has worked for them over time. I don't know what we're, how well it works for the clients, but it, it has worked for the MBAs running internet brands. Yeah. So we, you know, we get, a, we're already, you know, belaboring and we don't want this to feel like a, Oh, you know, Connor adding woe is me. There's all this consolidation going on. But again, the one is, is like the heads up. Same thing we said last time. Like, you, I think lawyers need to be aware of this, of like what's going on in the marketplace so they can make informed decisions about this stuff. Um, but two, there are tangible consequences and there are things that are going to impact like, you know, hey, you're a practicing lawyer, you're having lunch, you listen to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing, we wanna give you like some, some tactical things that you should be thinking about to put to work in your firm in the context of this thing. And so a lot of people think about fine law, and us, too, us included, you know, uh, we, Conrad, famous for his fine law jailbreak guide. Um, we think of fine law as a website, a law firm website and SEO and media managed like an agency, right? We think of fine law as like one of the bigger, longer standing um, agencies. But the other thing that people are probably familiar with fine law in the, uh, the lawyer context is that they've got this giant finelaw.com directory of lawyers and they have paid listings. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. Uh, and Conrad, you actually have, you were just recently asked about, you know, serendipitously, you were just recently asked by a client about yep, uh, client. directories. So give us the I'm, question. I'm going to ask the question. I got to take some stuff out of this, but uh, this is a question yeah. that all of you ask at least once a year. Um, this is another Internet Brands property. This was around Martindale Hubble. Um, but I'll, I'll read the question and then I'd, lo I'd love your perspective on this. Martindale Hubble, a legal director. This is an internal question. Uh, Martindale Hubble, a legal director we've been in since I, before I started, is increasing its prices for accounts like ours. Um, with X number of attorneys uh, listed, we are paying about $204 uh, a month for uh, each profile. The new listing is $260 a month. Um, it, it stinks that their prices are increasing so dramatically for us this year, but Martindale Hubble comes up high-ish in searches, and their website has a strong 84 rating for backlinking. Should I do this? How would you go about assessing, Guy, whether or not, what would your advice be to this, to, to my client? I'll, I'll, I'll bill them $450 an hour for your insight, uh, but how would, you, how would you tell my client or, or a client that you have whether or not they should spend this money. Well, in fact, uh, I have, I was, as we were prepping for this, I have an email that was forwarded to me from one of our clients uh, oh, from see? Martindale, Martindale Nolo. Um, this is this is from the, uh, I guess it's their rep. I wanted to mention the Martindale Nolo profile, which is included on a standalone basis, is of great value because when we link back to your website, through anchor text, follow through links, follow through links. Have you heard follow through links? Follow through um, it's links. It's helpful because we are authoritative, longstanding and relevant. And so, you know, to your client's point, there's this view of like, oh, we're getting these, these links. Now, a couple points, let's, let's do the SEO part first. 
Okay. Um, I am pro, in a vacuum, organic citations and links in a directory profile, like forgetting about paying for them, like you will claim your profile on major directories like Avo, Fine Law, uh, Lawyers.com. There's no question that being visible on vertical specific legal directories with your correct business information and a backlink has value to SEO. And and then the question is, is like, well, net net, what is the value? And well, people so will can say, I, well, can like, I back oh, you up one question yeah, before please. we get to the money on this? Yeah. You yeah. said major directories. Can yeah, you, right. for our dear listener, explain why you made that qualifying word when you talk yeah. about directories? Because like every other website, I can start, you know, geeslegaldirectory.com and charge you $100 a month for a listing there and it'll have zero value. You know, these directories are the ones that show up for, you know, head term searches, which we'll, we'll get into more of that when we get into like the lead uh, assessment thing. But, um, you know, we know that Google thinks these directories are relevant to legal. They rank for competitive legal queries. I mean, um, and so... Yeah, we, we know that those are sort those are sources of authority from these sites. So you know, to so tactically, the hold on, I'm gonna get you yeah. tactical again. How mm -hmm. would our dear listener determine whether or not something is a major legal directory or a fly by night? I just started something out of Uzbekistan. I would, I mean, the easiest way, if you're like a novice, easy way is just to go see if it ranks for anything, right? Okay. I mean, that's to my in my viewpoint, like if you want to simplify link building, the most relevant links are on the pages that rank for the query, right? Like that's Google's go. telling you, we think this is relevant for the query because we're putting it on, in our results. So whether it's right or wrong, that's what Google thinks. That's Google's perspective of it. Um, okay. And so, or, you know, getting, getting your business listed on those directories, those major legal ones that rank, like no question that has value. Now the, the, the hard part is, is if, and again, we're focusing the SEO part first is, all right, what's, how much should I spend on it? That's the trickier part. Now, I would say, you know, to your client, is your client, you know, quote unquote, market dominating law firm or is your client, you know, I got a couple thousand bucks a month to spend on Internet marketing? Because to me, all of the resource deployment has to be thought of in the context of their objectives and their overall budget. And so if you told because and again, I don't did, did your your client, I can't remember in the uh, question, did they share the pricing? Uh, yes, it is. So um, it is $260 a month for an attorney profile. Plus, okay, hold on. This is, this is weird. The new pricing is $260 a month for the first, first attorney profile plus $35 for each additional attorney. This is actually interesting. Buy in bulk. It's, it's well, it's the buy in bulk, but there's an SEO implication to this as well. So um, let's. It, that is really a fascinating way to look at it. Two sixty a month plus thirty five dollars for each additional attorney. Um, so they're talking about for they're talking about around six thousand dollars a year to spend on these directory listings. Do it or not, Guy. Okay. So what's the is that does that six thousand dollars represent a hundred percent of this firm's marketing budget or one percent of this firm's 1%. marketing budget? Okay. Probably do it. Pro probably, probably do the base profile. Probably. Uh, also, are they getting, um, where is the visibility? Like, what's the difference between the free version? Like, are they getting a bunch more pages of links? Because like, they're diminishing returns, in my opinion, right? So, so that's, that's, the, other, that's so the other challenge with this. Can you go into the diminishing returns of these links and why I found it curious that it's $260 a month for the, why is Martindale charging $260 for the first attorney? And thirty five dollars for each additional attorney from an SEO perspective. Yeah, they're they're pitching more links the better, and that's not necessarily the case. Now, there's arguments about like you know is this do they have multiple locations? Because um, then you can say well you know geographically targeted anchors might be more valuable if there's if it's you know not all going to the same place. Okay. Um, but but. I would say as a general rule of thumb, and I know that people disagree with me on this. Uh, some people do. I don't maybe know if you do or not, but Let's see if we disagree. I'm, I'm much more focused on total number of linking root domains than I am on overall number of links. Bingo. So this is where I, I thought, this is what I thought you were going to answer. That first link that if you have nothing, 
from Martin Del Nolo. That first link is actually pretty valuable. The second link, less so. The 200 in the second link, even less so, right? And so it's I, actually- the only, ref- the only ca- the caveat I would say to that is, okay. is that if they are, you know, if if one is on a bunch of pages about car accidents and then the second sure. one's on a bunch of pages about something other different topic, like there's some argument to say, well, you want some diversity in the topical nature of the anchors but and these are, also these are locality. profiles, right? These are that's the that's the thing. I'm like, but, but remember the profiles, profiles that the Could profiles get thrown up on these, you know, topically and geographic. We'll we'll dive into one of the actual directory pages, but you know, okay. it'll be like forward slash Chicago, forward slash car accident. And then if you're like forward slash Dallas, forward slash car accident, and those are linking to different internal pages on your site and you're using different internal pages in your Google business profiles, that's where you start being like, well, there's low, there's geographic relevance things that you want to think about. And so anyway, this was got, this got more nuanced than I think we intended. No, that's I great. think over, I think overall my view is, is that, uh, Major directories, there's going to be some threshold number of investment you probably should be making. What that number is should be in the context of your overall marketing budget, in my opinion, from an SEO standpoint. People also that are listening, if you're a little more sophisticated, you be like, but wait, Guy, these are no-followed links. That's A lot of them are no-followed links. That's another thing that we'll talk about in a second. Um, you know, the rep's email is certainly misleading in terms of both Google's guidelines, as well as, you know, there's a, uh, an SEO person would look at that email and be like, there's an implication that these are followed backlinks for SEO purposes. And most of the ones that even I just checked before pre-show on a lot of these directories, most of them are either no followed or sponsored, right? And okay. so, so I'm hey, Gee, still- what's, it, what's a no followed or sponsored link? Why, why, so why that, are you making the distinction? Yeah, they're just so that's that's a you know the way I say it. A lot of people have jumped on. I love this terminology, but uh, I think this is Google's uh, line on this: is that no follow is a, and sponsored are suggestions to Google that these links should not be counted in terms of ranking. I will say this: I don't buy it for a second. Right, I mean, that Wikipedia was my next links follow-up are, question. Yeah, yeah, Wikipedia links are <clears throat> no followed. Like maybe. Maybe we could argue there's some kind of dampening or something. I know I know that Google's official line is they don't count, but remember, Google is a data machine, and they're also ex- it's a very resource intensive endeavor to uh, index the entire web. And so, if they're indexing it, you know, if they've got a page that's indexed and that link is indexed and it's showing, you know, you're seeing it in Search Console and you're seeing it when you look for, um, you know, site colon queries, and they're actually like spend Google spending resources to keep it in the index. It's you're doing something with it, in my opinion. So I don't so get the, into, uh, yeah. Well, the, the no follow thing, like it used to be very real, right? That it used to be binary. It was, it was on or off. And the no follow thing was, was absolutely real thing. When I got into this game, this is a long time ago, the no follow links were called link condoms, right? Yeah. And I, I so think, I think is, the industry overthought that though. I, I think no, that there's but, those, but, you know, but you're right. Yeah. So what, what happened is we, the industry tried to use and abuse and manipulate no follow on links. And then Google started looking away from it. There was another question that you, that you were given the other day about, um, actually, no, you sent this to me. This was about, uh, kind of cloaking H1 texts for a or sorry it was, for, it was title tag text right how to how to write a title tag that is good for seo but actually have a title on the page that shows up for the user and a long time ago google decided like hey we're going to look at what the actual formatting is on the page as opposed to what you may or may not have as your actual code same thing happened with no follows they're using what they know the the notion that wikipedia links are no followed and therefore google doesn't think about it when it is the most curated site on the web that is 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 laughable. Yep. So let's parse the second part of this question. <clears throat> All right. Which is the business value from a you know client generation. You know, it's advertising, right? Um, so let's do the math, right? It's six thousand dollars a year. And let's let's put the SEO aside, you know, the relative value of the SEO, like that's a little bit more subjective. Um, if it's a small part of your budget, probably worth doing in a lot of cases. Let's go into just the client development. Like, it's, it's, are these ads? Because they're, they're ads, they're sponsored listings. Are they generating cases or not? Okay, well, let's see what it's got to do. What's the value of a client here in this context? What what practice error are we in? 
Oh, this is personal injury, right? So okay. you can make the very easy assessment. One one client pays for itself, Guy. Okay. Well, let's do let's do cost per case. Okay. So cost per case, six thousand dollar cost per case. You, you got to get two um, clients a year out of this to make yeah, it two even, clients a, even two clients a year. Okay. Right, Probably I agree. three. And yeah, and yeah, I think I would be, you know, and we've talked about this in other, we actually talked about this at Advocacy 360, and I kind of poo pooed it. But um, if you want a simple metric to use, you know, use the $2,000 Mendoza line cost per client. You need three clients. You need three clients um, for this to happen. And then just, now you're into the harder part, which is, is how do you track this? How do you actually do attribution for this directory? So Conrad, how would you tell this client we should be trying? What should we be, What do we have to have in place in order for us to actually be able to figure out the cost per client from this directory? So there's a couple of things. Number one, you need you, the directory needs to have a tracking phone number. OK, that has to be a part of the game, which most of the time they actually want because they want to be able to tell you that they made your phone ring, even if it was just the pizza guy, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, one thing too, I don't know you, where you are on this. Do you have the plat the ad platforms tracking number forward to a call rail number, or do you have 100%. it forward? We always yeah. use call rail. Otherwise, so, otherwise yeah. you have to believe what the fox is telling yes. you, right? And Tell fuck them that. because so 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 hold on. For people that don't know, what we're laughing about here. Explain, explain. We're not talking by ourselves. We've lost everyone. Well, because I'm, you know, because let's say I'm, I want to, I'm like, okay, I listen to Guy and Conrad. I'm going to like buy some yep. of these directory lists and see if they work. And this platform, this ad platform is selling me on, it's got tracking numbers. Everything's fine. It's got tracking numbers. Great. The problem is if you let your directory or your vendor tell you how often your phone is ringing. Let me use a very simple example with the directory. They will try and take credit for every single time that phone rings, right? And if someone calls you seven times, they will report that as seven leads. If you have it forward to CallRail, CallRail will figure out that it's the same person calling you seven times and will only show up as one lead. And you have the call recording in CallRail. You can actually see what is going on. And, and and then you can take your call call rail data, even the recordings, and automatically throw it into your intake management system if you're using a sophisticated intake management system. That's why you need to do it instead of just letting some graph from some monthly report show up and tell you that everything is going hunky-dory and that $6,000 you're dropping that, that time is really good, that year is a really good investment. So relying on your vendor to report on how they are doing, especially things like phone calls and form fills, it is a, it is a, a futile, silly effort. I'm going to throw another thing at you here. What about nap consistency? Well, a lot was made about nap consistency going way back. Um, so the nap consistency, most of the directories, and I can like, this goes back to my days at Avo when we were really big on tracking phone numbers. Most of the directories will enable, and you can do this with code, enable you to identify your primary phone number and, uh, you can also use a displayed tracking number, which is totally fine. It is not a nap consistency totally fine. problem. That's right. And and the directories as citations. This is important. Don't say, I'm not suggesting that the 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 the, na the nap game has changed dramatically, but having these citations correct is is actually important. I'll also add as a side note tangent uh, that you do the same thing with Google Business Profile, right? So the displayed number. In your Google Business Profile should be a call rail number that you track and it is unique to Google Business Profile. Otherwise, you have no idea what, what GBP is actually doing for you. But you can also have your primary number and, and not you, you can also, you also need to have your primary phone number on that GBP listing and that's not going to scramble anything. Sorry. And I got, all... Yeah, keep go going. I, I got lost in the, the NAP question, which we haven't no, had that fine. conversation in years. No, it's a, it's good though because again, I not so I I think these ma most of these majors are doing it, but if you're if you're looking at this kind of stuff and you're like I got tracking numbers, but you're not doing that and it's on a major directory that's a you know one of these places that Google actually looks for data that can be a problem. Um, to your point, I think that the uh, the NAP uh, value is probably not as strong as it used to be because it used to be like the primary thing. But anyway, you still got to track it. Also, you, so we talked phone tracking. 
you got to track it all the way back to your CRM. So you actually know that this turned into a case for you. And again, to Conrad's point, you should be doing this independently of all the tracking stuff because, you know, get, you know we've seen the reports. You're going to get this report. It's like, well, look at all these impressions. You got all these all these ad impressions and you got all these profile views and you got all this stuff. And that's all nonsense until you get an open case in your CRM that you can source back to this directory. Right. And, you, and you, for I, this context, you got to have three of them. Just because we're talking about tracking, I don't want to overlook this. I would also be using UTM codes to make sure that you know yeah. that the actual website traffic to your site is is happening and if you see if if you run that for a year and you've got a whole big zero you, you're probably pretty certain that the phone is not ringing either so i wouldn't discount the the don't overlook utm codes tracking directory traffic into your your site totally and, and one more thing before we because we just were like oh yeah do you know he's like do it and it's worth it and blah blah, blah. Go check to see if the directories are even ranking for your target queries. Like it's totally varies by practice area and location. Yeah. I mean, if you're in the middle of nowhere, like I was doing like a San Bernardino criminal defense lawyer search, guess what? Find laws directory page for that was like the number one thing in Google. That's not true if you go to downtown Chicago and New York. And so understanding the the directories, so th and this goes back to our 2022 conversation, the directories visibility and search for your target queries and what does your presence look like on the directory page? Because even if you, even if that directory is getting that visibility, if you're buried on the page or all the competitors listed on the page have way more reviews than you, you got the same problem that we talked about in all these other contexts. Like it's never going to convert for you. And the directories play a bunch of horseshit games to try and convince you when they're selling you that you are special. And in many cases, they'll do things like they'll rotate, right? And so they'll sell twenty. They'll sell twenty people. The top spot, you just rotate. You're one of you're one of twenty. You get five percent of it. Don't I? I would be really careful about whether or not when you get these directory listings, if it's be if you expect to get value beyond the SEO link, which if you're paying for it goes against Google's guidelines, but that's kind of beside the point at this point in time. <laughs> if you're expecting to get value beyond that link, I would want to you're know. You're not. You won't. I, I, how many of I, you off the top of your head, how many clients you got that you're like, I'm, I know that we are four to five X multiple on fees specifically from let's take your best friend Avo. My best friend Avo. Speaking of, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I'll, 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 how about I'll play defense on this back yeah. in the day. The answer is absolutely. There were people absolutely building their business on Avo. Yeah, um, you're talking back in the day. You mean pre-sale? I mean pre-sale, right? And, and so, probably, probably much earlier than that. I mean, Avo Avo generated a ton of business for for law firms. Um, you know, it's it's interesting. We talk about internet brands and Avo. Yeah, I, did did Avo did the value of Avo's advertising become more or less valuable to lawyers pre or post the acquisition? I would say it has faded somewhat into obscurity. I mean, even you, I know you track search results more than I do. Um, it, it really, yeah, they were, has, they were gone until they, until they brought the, until Google brought forums and discussions back, they were basically had disappeared. It, it really, which it, is I why mean, Mark Whitehead says, Oh, Mark, Mark Whitehead. We have to come back to the Mark Whitehead quote. Mark wrote <laughs> on somewhere on the socials when we were talking about this final law purchase, internet brands is where companies go to die. Um, which is kind of brutal. I've heard it before. It's not the first time I've heard, I've heard it heard before that. too. Yeah, I don't um, think Mark coined that. But I think Mark Mark was probably quoting you. No. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Avo did kind of fade off to obscurity. I think one of the if you look at the Internet Brands playbook, and, and I'll use Avo as an example because I was so close. To, by the way, thank you, Internet Brands, for the big check. I shouldn't I shouldn't ignore right. ignore that fact that it worked out That's really right. fine for Conrad. Right. Um, did it re work really well for, I bet it works um, great for internet brands too. Well, so, so I, this is where I'm going. I think they actually do a good job of the, uh, cash cowing the brands that they totally. purchase. Totally. And they know exactly if, what they're doing. If you expect, so I naively, very naively thought that when internet brands purchased Avo, they were going to put Mark Britton in charge of the legal kind of keiratsu of portfolio companies that they had. And he would drive innovation. And 
they did the exact opposite. I can't remember the last innovative thing that Avo did other than selling at, other than selling to internet brands. No, um, the most innovative thing they did was the uh, buying Engage and then selling the lawyers' leads to other law firms. Wow. Okay, that's I mean, brutal. that's innovative, right? Uh, if you're an MBA, sure. It's not tech innovative. Um, <laughs> you're going to get some hate mail, dude. Um, uh, you're but, you're but, the one who broke that story. Uh, I did break that. And I only broke that story because I had two fucking clients who were so pissed off that it was happening to them and they had no idea why. And they asked us what we what they asked us what we were doing to make this happen. They thought it was us. They were pissed. Anyway, that's sure. an aside. Yep. If you look at the AVA model and then you consider the fine law model, I my my expectation is that they will cash cow this. Um, there's probably not going to be a lot of innovation that is coming that is investment that is made into the fine law brand. Um, the other thing that I think will probably happen is they've, you alluded this, or not alluded, you called this out at the beginning. There's a lot more data, right? So they will now have access to a lot more data and there'll be cross data usage and value between Engage, Captora, Lawyers.com, Martindale, Nolo, Avo, et cetera. And then it'll include fine line. And the value of that data, I, I, again, I, I, I lust after access to that data. Um, does it help the, the you know, there are over 4,000 solo practitioners who use fine law. Are they better off or worse off? I don't know. Yeah. And I'm going to be super curious to see in the context of, because again, we really focus on the directory aspect of this. You know, do they continue their website building? Um, do they continue media management in other contexts? Because again, that seems to be a place where like they, that data becomes extremely valuable. You know, the directory stuff, they're primarily at the whim of Google, right? It's like, does Google continue to show directories prominently in these search results? Or does Google decide to show its own directory in the local pack more prominently in local services ads? That's, you know, I don't know that. But, but I think the thing that we can say is, how many legal services consumers, when they, when they start their legal services hiring journey, are thinking, I'm going to go to findlaw.com, or I'm going to go to avo.com, or I'm going to go to maybe lawyers.com because it's literally lawyers.com. And I think the answer to that is very few. I mean, I think if you pull, if we went out, that's what we should do is like person on the street, ask them if they've ever heard of this. Avo. Yeah. I, I mean, Avo spent a lot of money trying to change that equation. I it, love their and, commercials, and, by the way. I love their TV commercials. You remember? Uh, yes. And and ask anyone who doesn't work in legal to tell you about one of those commercials today, and you will get the blanks there. Um, yeah, it's it's the Google game. So interesting, very very interesting. We had two acquisitions in less than two weeks. Uh, as far as you know, Guy and I knew nothing about either of them, and we don't know anything about anything else on the horizon either. Perhaps next pod, we won't have to talk about another acquisition. We'll have, to, we'll have something else to talk I about. I foresee <laughs> a few more coming. Oh, come on. I just tried to tease it. Now you're, see, you accused me of having the mole. You're, the, you, I, was, I was talking about your mole. I think it's yours. You're talking, I was talking about, about your mole. Are we having mole envy now? All right. So thank you again, dear listener. We're sorry that we belabored you with another acquisition talk. We hope you found something valuable in terms of assessing um, the, your investments in these directories and tracking it back to clients. Uh, as always, if you just landed here, please do subscribe for more Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Until next time, Conrad and Gee saying farewell. Money makes a money makes a it makes a world go round. Your yeah, money make a world go round. Your yeah, money make a world go round.